webinar this morning. Before we get started, I just wanted to make sure everyone can hear me. If you can't hear me, please raise your hand by clicking the hand icon on the control panel and then lower your hand once you can hear. That way it'll allow our technical producer, Karen, technical producer Karen to help troubleshoot. We'll give a minute to see if there's any problem. And also, if you are experiencing any echo and are using a voice over IP, which is audio through your computer, you may want to switch and call in on a phone, a landline telephone, not a cell phone. Okay. Seems like people are doing okay, and Karen will help the ones that are seem to be having a problem here. <clears throat> okay, good. So I'd like to welcome everyone to the Build It Green and LA County Presents entitled Remodelers, Now Rate Your Own Projects. My name is Michelle Brown and I'll be your host this morning. Just wanted to let you know that Build It Green offers monthly webinars as part of our continuing education offerings and member benefits as members receive free admission to our webinars as well as free access to our webinar library. And please note this webinar and PowerPoint slides will be available for download in our members webinar library by early next week. And regarding CEU credit for this webinar, I apologize that there was a misprint in our event listing and today's webinar is not available for CEU credit. We do apologize for any inconvenience this may cause folks. And if you're not a member of Build It Green already, we hope you will consider becoming a part of Build It Green's member community and helping to support our work in California. Visit our website to learn more. So today we'll be discussing how construction professionals can now rate their own remodeling projects. We will take questions and answers at the end of the presentation, but you are invited to type your questions into the chat box and we will read them for our presenters to answer. Please know that everyone will be muted during the presentation. And we just want to remind you a quick survey will go out immediately after the webinar and we'd appreciate it if you could fill it out to let us know how we're doing with our webinar offering. Okay, so this morning we're very lucky to have with us Build It Green's staff, Amy Dryden and Kevin Beck. Let me tell you a little bit about them. Amy is, Greenpoint, is the Greenpoint rated senior project manager and she brings a combination of her experience as a residential builder and planning consultant with a focus on ecologically and socially minded building to the Greenpoint rated program. With 10 years experience in residential construction, which includes nonprofit and for-profit, Amy has a working knowledge of all trades and phases in, of construction in new construction and remodel projects. She has contributed to green building specifications and guidelines and lead projects for affordable housing and has been assisting Habitat East Bay with their green building efforts since 2000. Recently, as a planning consultant, she has developed planning and design proposals and policies from the watershed scale to the site scale, addressing ecological and social goals through community planning in Los Angeles, North Carolina, and Hawaii. Amy is a certified green building professional, a certified Greenpoint Raider, a lead AP, and a HERS Raider, and she has completed work in each capacity. She received a Bachelor's of Arts in Anthropology from Boston University and a Master in Landscape Architecture and a Master in City Planning from UC Berkeley. Please say hello, Amy. Hello, everybody. And I'd like to introduce everybody to Kevin Beck. Kevin is the in-house trainer at Build It Green. And prior to joining Build It Green, Kevin was a trainer for all of the advanced certified green building professional trainings at Build It Green. He is also a certified trainer for the California Building Performance Contract Association, also known as CBPCA. Kevin's own company, Building Performance Services, is a Bay Area building science consulting firm dedicated to helping architects, builders, and homeowners make homes more comfortable, healthier, and energy efficient. He specializes in home performance and building technology consulting with a focus on preventing and resolving problems related to building design, construction, and operation. Kevin has been in the residential construction industry here in California for over 30 years. He was in the very first group to be certified as a CGBP here in the Bay Area in 2003. He considers himself a lifelong student of building science and home performance, and he's a practicing Building Performance Institute, a BPI building analyst and shell expert, a certified energy plans examiner, Greenpoint Raider, lead Raider, and residential and light commercial energy consultant. Please say hello, Kevin. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so I'm going to hand this over to Amy. Uh, let's give a minute here. Okay. 
doing our little switch over. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, today, Kevin and I are going to be presenting. Um, the title of this presentation is Remodelers Now Rate Your Own Projects. And as we kind of approached this and started putting together uh, this PowerPoint and presentation for you, um, we realized we wanted to cover it from, come at it from a slightly different perspective. We wanted to give you, as remodeling contractors, some context of what we know remodeling um, to be today um, and how uh, that ties into Greenpoint Rated Existing Home Program what is home performance, and what is energy upgrade, and how these things um, are pulled together so that you as a remodeling contractor can respond to the current trends, um, the opportunities in funding, training, uh, programs that are out there, and put it together to be able to respond to your customer needs and uh, deliver good, or good services to them. Um, to meet their remodeling requirements. So the way we're going to structure this, I'm going to go through some of the context of the remodeling, Greenpoint rated. I'm going to hand it over to Kevin to go through um, what is home performance and get into Energy Upgrade California. And then we'll talk about Energy Upgrade California upgrades and getting to a green upgrade um, and pulling it together um, and what this means for you and we'll take questions. As Michelle noted, you know, please type questions as we're going through the presentation um, and we'll be answering them at the end. So just to give you some context and what we have been reading kind of on a national level of what's going on in the remodeling industry, um, again these are national trends, not just California, but um, a poll put out there with 64% of the homeowners saying that they will invest in renovation projects um, this year. Um, so the, the, economy, um, the economy is a driving factor for folks to be doing remodelers and staying in their homes. Um, we're seeing a lot more age in place rather than um, selling and moving. Um, we're also seeing this, the idea of smaller kitchen remodels and bath remodels uh, come about more where folks are doing projects, smaller projects over time rather than taking on much larger remodels and doing significant portions of the homes. Um, and for these folks that are looking at these um, various types of remodels and upgrades, 32% of them say that green is going to be a part of it. So it is becoming a much larger part of the decision-making process and goal of the consumer of the homeowner. Um, additionally, uh, what we're seeing is that um, these upgrades and these renovations are also being driven by um, funding or rebates out there. Part of this national poll also um, polled some remodeling contractors, and I actually can't recall the percentage off the top of my head, but a number, a significant number of the remodelers responded that they are working with projects that are participating in um, rebate or incentive programs. So this is becoming uh, a bigger part of um, doing the upgrades. Again, what we're seeing in the remodeling industry is an offset to what's happening in the new construction industry. Um, the new construction industry is taking a much longer time to rebound, and we'll see that it will take a longer time to rebound in uh, the state of California because we were hit pretty hard. But we're seeing the um, projected uh, increase for remodelers to increase over the next five years. This graph here just shows you, you can see a significant <clears throat> decline there in 2005 to 2010 and the projected increase for 2010 to 2015. Um, and again, that's really basing it on um, the previous conditions that we talked about. So in addition to, you know, how homeowners are approaching remodeling and then they want green and they want to do these small upgrades. Um, we're also finding that 
clients or homeowners want to purchase green. So McGraw Hill, you know, did this survey, and even in this type of economy where um, money is tight, 70% um, of these homeowners polled would be interested to purchase a green home, and that is a priority of value to them. Um, the reasons being that you know operational cost savings, health, injury air quality issues, environmental concerns of doing their part, and again potentially thinking about greater resale value down the line. Um, the other thing uh, to know is that um, clients do see this kind of green seal of approval of verification, and we'll talk about this in a couple more slides, but um, the proven value or the that a home has met some green standards. And in Seattle, we actually have data because the Seattle program uh, built green is on the MLS, where they have been able to document that certified green homes have sold 25 to 50 percent faster, and that's within uh, Seattle proper as well as the surrounding suburbs, um, and at a higher price, again, depending on the location, right, in uh, Seattle and the surrounding um, area. Um, we'll start seeing that, uh, hopefully we'll start gathering some data in California to be able to make some comparisons in regions throughout California as we see green labeling uh, become a part of the MLS listing. So green labeling, um, that brings us right to Greenpoint Rated. Um, Greenpoint Rated is a green labeling program. It is the insurance for customers that their home is being built to a set of known standards uh, that have been um, that have the support of various stakeholders uh, throughout the state um, and have been vetted. It is a label that consumers can look at as they would look at an Energy Star label and know that that has met known standards and it is a better performing appliance than an appliance that does not have that label. Um, it's been tested, it's been verified. Um, same with the organic labels. If that's a value to you, you're going to go to the market and purchase that because you know it meets um, the standards and has the value that you are looking for. Um, you may not know what all those criteria are behind the organic label, but as a consumer you don't, you don't need to know those standards. Um, and that's what the Greenpoint Radio Greenpoint rated label is. It shows clients that this home has been verified, met a set of known standards, even though they may not understand every single measure on that checklist and what the verification methodology is or the reference standard. They know that it is energy efficient, it has indoor air quality benefits, um, it's meeting environmentally uh, environmental goals, um, addressing resource conservation and water conservation. The Greenpoint Rated Label and Program is a comprehensive list of best green practices. Not every single green building practice in the world is on there. Um, it's a pretty robust list of best practices um, that are appropriate for a number of projects. Um, has that built-in flexibility uh, with that. It is based on a strong set of verification protocols that are um, administered by a rater who has gone through training through Build It Green, um, which provides that independent validation that this project has many known standards and it's not just a builder standing up um, without the support of a program, uh, standards, and methodology behind them. That folks can stand up and say this project has met um, this certification. If you're not familiar with it, the way we in, we define green for Greenpoint Rated is to address the five categories on the right-hand side there, community design, energy efficiency, indoor air quality, resource conservation, and water conservation. While a home may exceed in one of those categories or another, our goal is that every home has to address each of those categories to a capacity to be called green. So again, to reiterate what this label does um, for folks, it helps the consumers identify green homes. Um, 
Again, these are becoming part of the MLS. We have it on three MLS in California, San Francisco, and two in Southern California, and I apologize, I cannot recall uh, which ones they are. Um, but what this does, it brings green labeling to the fore. So it's on the MLS, it's searchable, it's going to be part of the discussion from the realtor for the home buyer. Um, in it's going to be, for folks that are interested in it, they're going to be searching out um, this label. As a result, then, we'll start to build market value for green labeling. And as we gather this data and be able to um, put together comparisons of homes that were rated or built to a green building standards and homes that weren't, we'll actually we'll be able to have more information about um, what the, what the actual dollar value is, the market value is for that. This label also allows uh, contractors to differentiate themselves. In this climate, um, as folks are looking for work and looking to differentiate themselves, um, they can show that they have the capacity and capability to build to a known standard and get a home rated to provide their consumer or their client um, with a label that uh, gives their client the assurance that it was built to an standard as well as potential increased market value. Just a quick overview of the Greenpoint rated program um, and kind of this, the sector that we serve, that it is a residential program and we have rating systems available for new home and existing home that address both the single family and the multifamily sectors. And today we're really going to be talking about the existing home single family um, rating system. In developing the existing home rating system um, and, and thinking about that's what we were trying to target uh, existing homes that may be going through small upgrades, be it the small bathroom or the small kitchen piece by piece or a larger, much more substantial remodel we wanted to develop a program that was um, meets the intent of Greenpoint rated, which is accessible but um, credible and built to some known standards and has uh, reasonable thresholds for improving a home to meet our green building criteria and address those five categories. What we put together is what we have as the elements pathway, our accessible entry point with six required measures. Um, to help address some basic building integrity, as well as um, uh, basic green building practices, including waste diversion. The energy approach for the elements is from a prescriptive uh, energy measure list, really a, a single measure approach. The minimum points for participation is 25, and we cap it at 49. Um, when I go into the whole house, you'll see why. But this, this pathway is really appropriate, again, for a smaller project um, that may be, you know, that's addressing a limited portion of the house. And they can get that label. For a much larger, much more substantial project or a home that has completed a number of small renovations over time and, have, you know, has touched a majority of the home, the whole house label or whole house pathway may be more appropriate. That has 11 required measures. So it's a little bit more robust, a little bit more comprehensive. Um, the energy evaluation is a performance evaluation requirement. And what that means is it requires modeling um, through the use of the Energy Pro software. The minimum points for, for this label is 50. Um, just to reiterate, each pathway, elements, or a whole house has a minimum point threshold in each of those categories the whole house has a higher threshold um, for certification. This just to show you the Greenpoint rated certificates. The one on the left is for the whole house. It gives you your total points. And the one on the right gives you your total points, but also helps you indicate where you are in progress to, OK, you've done the elements, and then you can build on that and get to the whole house eventually. So it's a, it's a pathway. In addition to the certificates that show you, you know, what you have achieved as far as um, 
points and measures in the Greenpoint Rated Program, we have the Climate Calculator label. And we're pretty excited about this. Um, it is a calculator unique out there in that it evaluates the benefits of green building. We see a number of calculators out there that will evaluate your personal footprint as a household or an individual, um, depending on, um, you know, a lot of it depends on square footage and diet and whether or not you're driving to work and things of that sort. This is evaluating the impact of these particular green practices. What this calculator will do is going to estimate the greenhouse gas emissions avoided for new construction or reduced for existing construction. Our, our homes are producing a number of greenhouse gas emissions today, and if we improve them, then we're actually reducing our emissions. This mechanism will help provide feedback for CEQA, which is really appropriate for new construction, um, for folks who are going through a permitting process, for green building ordinances, uh, for jurisdictions who are looking to evaluate the success of their ordinances or, or C&D recycling policies. Um, the climate calculator also provides points on scope of emissions um, for climate action plans or any carbon trading markets, et cetera. What this label really shows is it allows consumers to see the quantified benefits of green building. That label shows, um, it may be hard to read, but it shows, shows you what percentage um, less energy every year that the house is using, or water consumption, or how much waste was recycled during construction, um, what are the avoided tons or reduced tons of CO2 every year as a result of the green building practices integrated into this building. So now consumers can not only look at the particular practices that they are interested in for green building, but also be able to see uh, some of these measures quantified. Um, so again, it provides them with more data about the building. And this allows the builders to um, deliver that information to potential home buyers or clients about the benefits. So how is Greenpoint Rated delivered? Uh, Greenpoint Rated was developed for third-party consultant delivery which means there's an independent rater who is delivering um, the label who is hired by the builder or the contractor to do the evalu evaluation of the green building practices uh, from a third party standpoint. We have recently rolled out the contractor delivery model. And this really applies to you all remodeling contractors, BPI contractors, architects somebody who is integral to the project team. The reason for rolling this out was because for the existing home market, um, these folks, you all, are on the front lines interfacing with the homeowners and can have that conversation about participation in the Greenpoint Rated Program and be able to roll it into the services that you offer. So regardless of whether or not you are a third-party rater or you are approaching this from the contractor delivery model, there are these basic certification requirements. Number one, you have to complete our training, which includes our Greenpoint rated core, a two-day train, two and a half day training, and our existing home training, which is an additional two-day training. These incorporate written and field exams into them. We want you to have residential construction and green building experience. Most of you as remodeling contractors obviously have that construction experience because what we are teaching you is not uh, construction or building 101 or green building 101. We are building on that knowledge and talking to you about uh, particular practices, green building practices, and how to verify them. We also want you to have a uh, home performance experience. And that's because with the existing home program, we have incorporated specific um, testing procedures that are required for the, uh, for the program. Um, we are dealing with existing homes, so the energy performance of these homes varies widely. 
from homes that were built, you know, in the 1920s bungalow to, you know, a 19, what's it like, a ranch home, 1950s ranch. So what does home performance mean? Um, the way we are build it green is defining home performance experience to earn this credential is as follows. Either our advanced CGBP um, with three ratings with a QA mentor, and I'll describe what that is in a minute, or the EUC basic package training that Build It Green delivers, again with three ratings with a QA mentor. BPI, you're a BPI building analyst, and you've done at least uh, four tests, or you're a HERS rater, and you've done four tests. Um, what we're really looking at here is some training on um, concepts of home performance, as well as some experience utilizing the equipment. To um, roll out this program and maintain the credibility and integrity of a program, so um, it has that value in the marketplace and brand recognition from the consumers, and they can have the assurance of what that Greenpoint rated label means. Build It Green does QA on all raters. Our standard QA process is that um, within the recertification cycle, which is two years, we will review one or one percent of the projects of all raters, new and existing. Um, and we will evaluate that and make sure that folks are um, meeting all program requirements in the delivery. As we rolled out this additional contractor delivery model, um, to maintain the kind of credibility of the program as folks are um, completing the remodel and evaluating and verifying their work, we added additional QA, additional quality assurance. What this means is if you are a contractor who is completing a green remodel and verifying it and submitting it to Build It Green for a rating, you're going to be working with a third-party QA rater who is going to be providing additional QA on your projects. As you have successful ratings and you continually um, meet the program requirements, that QA will be reduced over time. So that's the Greenpoint Rated Program um, and what it means to participate in it. And now we're going to go into the section on home performance, and Kevin's going to be delivering that. Um, as we were building this presentation, I thought it was prudent that we kind of discuss the definition of home performance. Um, people throw the term around pretty loosely. Um, Amy showed you some examples of, of how Build It Green is perceiving what home performance experience is. Um, but basically, we all should understand that home performance is a, is a mindset. It's a way we do our work. It's a house as a system approach to how we remodel or build a home. Um, it's looking at all the parts of the structure of the systems, of the equipment, and see how they interrelate um, because as as you become acquainted or if you take BPI training, et cetera, or the advanced CGBP training, uh, we do talk about this interrelationship and how one part can affect another. So that's basically the core of home performance, not looking at one item at a time, but how do they interrelate. Typically, home performance contractors, those contractors who are calling themselves home performance contractors, have BPI certifications under their belt. Whether it's just building analysts or multiple certifications, <clears throat> um, like shell or envelope, heating, air conditioning, et cetera, um, you want that level of training that you probably didn't get as you were coming up through the ranks as a contractor. Um, just because you might have that certification as a BPI certified individual, in my opinion, that does not make you a home performance contractor. Um, we need to tie the two together. Um, there are analysts out there who don't have a lot of experience in the construction industry, but they know how to diagnose and analyze homes for performance, but they don't have the experience of actually putting in those 
remediation steps. So make sure that when you're talking to your consumers or when you're promoting yourself um, that you understand that subtle difference. Um, a lot of us home performance contractors uh, obtained multiple certifications, not just BPI, but also HERS and HERS 1 and 2, um, as well as you know certified energy plans examiners, raters for LEED programs, etc., because we wanted to offer more to our clients. We wanted to be that one-stop shop. Um, so that, that gives you a very well-rounded um, education and knowledge base as you move forward into what's becoming a performance-based um, industry. For those of you who are not familiar with BPI, it is uh, the initial stand for the Building Performance Institute, originated up in the Northeast um, out of necessity, looking for solutions to weatherize low-income homes and how to figure out what was happening in those homes. Um, scientific methodologies were developed to determine what the infiltration was in homes and how they can curb that problem. Um, but understand that BPI is not a training entity. They are a standards and thresholds methodology um, producing organization. They write the rule book, basically, and we follow the rule book. Uh, to get your BPI certification, you'd have to go through an affiliate like Build It Green or any of the other affiliates here in California and across the nation um, to obtain those certifications. Um, you can get uh, individual certifications uh, that is transferable across state lines. The BPI certification is good in all 50 states. Um, much like uh, ResNet's HERS Raider certification is applicable in all 50 states. Um, but understand that you could also get your whole company accredited by BPI. There are more hoops and gates to go through to get that accreditation, but it does offer you some more benefits through BPI, uh, different sales and marketing materials that they provide. But it, it comes with a cost, is a, I think a, a $3,000 a year quality assurance fee that you pay to BPI. You do have a lot more oversight, but um, a lot more benefits becoming accredited as well. Within building performance or BPI, um, they do offer various certifications. The most popular one is building analysts. You're going to see that a lot on utility rebate incentive programs. They're going to look for individuals who have that base certification. Um, that is the primary certification. You can't leapfrog over that. You have to take that one first. Um, if you are a contractor and you are going to be providing remediation work, uh, we strongly encourage you to get your envelope certification uh, that goes further into um, pressure diagnostics in the home and how to solve issues within the home that might be caused um, by inappropriate air sealing or misaligned boundaries, etc. cetera. Um, there's also heating certifications. Um, those are specific to HVAC um, contractors. Um, you can get the certification without having an HVAC license, but it's, it's basically for that industry so they understand what the BPI thresholds are when assessing equipment and how to improve those systems so they perform better and cost less to run. Same thing with air conditioning and heat pumps. They split it up into two different certifications, but those two should be obtained if you're an HVAC contractor. Um, last year they rolled out a few new ones, uh, the leakage control installer and the leakage control crew chief. Um, this is to help that medium or intermediate level staff person on your crew um, so that they understand some basics in building science without having to go through a whole long course, but they can understand the principles and apply that to the work that they're doing. Um, they also have a multifamily building analyst. Uh, we did that once last year at Build It Green and hopefully we'll offer it again, but that's to look at uh, larger buildings and facilities and how to analyze those. And according to BPI, there are many more certifications coming, so stay tuned. <clears throat> a lot of people ask, well, how is BPI going to benefit me? Well, if you're curious or interested or playing in the Energy Upgrade California program, uh, you will have to become BPI certified. That's mandatory in the advanced path. 
Uh, you can get in the basic path without the certification, but they are assuming that you're working towards that um, basic certification of building analyst at a minimum. Um, and as I said earlier, the certifications are recognized nationally. They're, it's a very credible organization. Uh, any conference you go to, they're all going to know who BPI is. Uh, if you get your company accredited, that's just one more level of proof that you're determined and you're passionate about delivering a superior product. Um, as we talked about earlier, you know, differentiation is an important part of today's business model. Um, we have to find ways to, to set ourselves apart from our competitors a little bit, and BPI is definitely a way to do that. Um, if you're not going into the programs, it's still a very valuable certification. It's a very valuable training and education to go through as a builder. Uh, when I went through it you know, five or six, seven years ago, um, it was very eye-opening what I had done wrong all those years. Um, hopefully, someday this will be a requirement so every new contractor who gets his license will have some kind of building science training because this is what we've been missing all these years. And if we can kind of switch lanes... Uh, we can really make a difference with our energy consumption as a nation. Um, I also like that last bullet point about preserving your profit, keeping the money in your pocket. Uh, a lot of complaints from production builders is they spend a lot of money and time fixing problems that could have been solved had they done some preliminary testing on the front end or built in some measures that were um, maintenance-free, et cetera. So BPI does afford you that luxury of making sure you get it done right the first time. I uh, get a lot of questions about should I do HERS or BPI. Um, just want to clarify the difference between the two. HERS raters initially in California, the HERS, the phase one HERS raters were basically verifiers out in the field for new construction and additions where new equipment was being installed, new insulation, etc. When we were called out as HERS raiders, we would go out and check to see if a piece of equipment was put in and it matched the Title 24 documents, and then we would walk away. There was really no emphasis about what the quality of the installation was or how it was put in or if it was sized right, etc. cetera. Um, we were basically verifiers. A very essential part of our energy um, efficiency codes here in California, but there is a big difference between a HERS raider and a BPI certified individual. Um, HERS raters are taught somewhat on blower door and duct blasting and some uh, solar panel installation tests that we perform, um, insulation methodologies that we verify in the field to make sure they're put in correctly, but that's basically about it. When you get into BPI training, you're going to learn a lot more than that. Um, basically, I tell people HERS raters is like elementary school and BPI is high school and college. Um, definitely HERS Raiders have value, but if you want a more robust training and, and education, you might want to look into BPI instead or in addition to, uh, because there you'll learn all the diagnostic tools, the basic package stuff, lower door, et cetera, but also you'll learn more about combustion safety, um, assessing systems for performance, et cetera. Uh, just quickly, the difference between the HERS-1 Raiders, Phase 1, and HERS-2 Raiders. Um, as I was mentioning, HERS-1 Raiders were only there to verify systems. Um, those were required to make sure that the equipment matched the Title 24 documents so that um, the agency or the, the planning department, et cetera, the building department was assured that the right equipment was being installed. There was no way to tell unless someone was out there looking at it. Uh, HERS-2 Raiders, very different story. Um, you have to become a HERS-1 Raider before you can hop over to HERS-2, but HERS-2 is specifically addressing the existing housing market. Um, for most of those uh, existing homes, there are no blueprints to follow. So HERS-2 Raiders are taught how to measure a home, how to enter it into the software. You're basically doing an energy run in Energy Pro um, as a HERS-2 rater to assess what could be done to the home to improve its energy efficiency. Um, so they're out there measuring windows, exposures, you know, orientations, glazing. They're doing a blower door and a duct blast. They're taking some information off the nameplates of the equipment 
and then entering all that into the software, and it'll spit out um, a priority list based upon climate zone and cost effectiveness for that particular house. So what does the future hold for home performance and just this whole perf this performance pathway in general? Uh, well, most of the rebate and incentive programs that we, we're seeing nowadays are relying upon some type of performance evaluation in the field. Um, so this, this will require a diagnostician, whether you're HERS rater with appropriate credential or a BPI individual. Uh, we need those types of individuals out there in the field to verify. Uh, the codes are shifting in California. We're seeing that with uh, HVAC and insulation, and we're hearing that from the CEC, um, that they're, they're really, to meet their goals as a state, um, they're going to have to start pushing for performance, not just prescriptive. So that, that in turn will require more on-site field testing. Um, also with the green label program, especially with our own Greenpoint rated label, on the existing home, we do want to verify performance. So you're going to have to know how to diagnose and look at homes and, and test them for, for performance. So that's an integral part of our labeling system. It is embedded in the lead system as well, and you're going to see more of that. Uh, this kind of leads into Energy Upgrade California for those of you who are going to participate or who already are participating. Just as a little recap, there are two pathways within the program. Um, there's the basic upgrade package that provides a $1,000 rebate to the homeowner. It is a prescriptive pathway. They are required to do those five measures over on the right side, air sealing, attic insulation, duct sealing. Uh, they want us to insulate five feet of the hot water line coming off the water heater and then install a thermostatic control valve on the shower head and hopefully recommend a low flow shower head. Um, very prescriptive, but it does have some lofty um, goals. Um, there are some pretty tight thresholds, so it's not a giveaway. The air sealing, they do want to bring the home down to 0.35 air changes per hour, natural, uh, which is not easy to do on some homes, so that might be a challenge, but that's the, that's the threshold we're shooting for. Attic insulation relates to only attic insulation at this point in the basic path. Um, they want to take everything up to R38. Um, duct sealing, they want to bring down duct leakage to 10% of nominal airflow. Um, and then the insulation on the water pipes, as I was saying, is the first five feet. For those projects and homeowners who want to possibly go for a larger incentive or rebate, um, we're encouraged to push them into the advanced package. Um, it does require energy modeling. Uh, there's a few more criteria that they have to do, but basically the energy model will project what the energy savings are on the front end. The work is done and then the model is adjusted on the tail end based on a, a, another test out, and then that energy savings equates to the rebate or incentive dollars that the homeowner would receive. Um, anywhere from 10 to 40 percent. And we're seeing most of the packages, most of the projects here in California are skipping right over the basic path and going right into the advanced package just because of the higher rebates. And a lot of these rebates, as a reminder, this is the baseline rebate from the utility, but a lot of the cities and counties are also peppering this with their own rebates and incentives, and Amy will talk about that. So back to you, Amy. So one of the things we're talking with folks is how to get from that energy upgrade that Kevin was just talking about, be it uh, the basic pathway or the advanced pathway, and how to get to a green home and get the label. So what we want to get out there is as folks, consumers, or you are talking to a client about the benefits of the EC um, incentives, energy upgrade California incentives, and the criteria to meet them, that you take it one step further and get them to address another handful of items and get them to a Greenpoint rated label. For all the reasons we discussed earlier, you know, the value of their home, the assurance, and as you'll see in a couple slides, the additional um, incentives available. So what we see is a, you know, a basic energy upgrade is really kind of your down payment on getting a green upgrade. 
by adding kind of a few additional um, measures, you can get there. So if we look at the slide as you know, illustrative of you know, what's what's included in a basic energy upgrade, right? You're obviously addressing energy either via through a percentage of improvement via the advanced pathway. You're going to be doing you could be doing prescriptive by increasing attic or wall insulation, sealing your ducts, uh, sealing your envelope. You're going to be looking at combustion safety and uh, CO monitoring, so it's addressing your indoor air quality, and water consumption or water conservation through insulating your hot water pipes and hopefully a low flow shower head. So you can see there you're already addressing three out of the five categories that we look at for a green building. If we just add a few more and you look at uh, addressing energy from a couple other different perspectives in addition to what's already been done, either um, how the water heating system is run or the efficiency of the unit itself, efficient lighting, additional diagnostic testing, window upgrades or appliances, indoor air quality, any low emitting materials, be it the insulation you're installing, um, we have thresholds for that, or exhaust fans, bath, garage, kitchen are all good options there. Water, look to uh, incorporate additional uh, low flow fixtures in the house, not just the shower head. Um, and for resources, again, you're installing the insulation, you've got recycled content insulation, you've got recycling your waste um, from the, the scope of work you're doing. So these can start building upon what you've done, what you've included in the energy upgrade and getting them to a green upgrade. And that, let's see, let's talk about what that means, I guess, kind of financially first um, for folks and what the rebates are available. Um, in LA County, we have green labeling rebates available. The first four homes that are in a sales transaction, right, so they're going up for sale, we have up to $5,000 available for folks who are going through the Green Point Mated Program. In addition to that, uh, you know, after those homes or after that money is uh, spent, we have $500 to $1,000 for homeowners who are achieving the Greenpoint rated label. Uh, the differentiation there is based on whether or not you're going for an elements to a whole house label, as well as there's a $200 referral fee. So you as a contractor or a realtor who are bringing a project um, to the program, you'll be the one receiving um, that incentive or that rebate. In LA County, as Kevin talked about earlier, there is the um, energy upgrade incentive for the advanced pathway, right? 1,250 to 4,000, depending on your percent of improvement. And he mentioned that various jurisdictions are adding a little kind of kicker or bonus to this, and LA County has done that. Typically, they've been offering $500 uh, in addition to what you would receive through the UC program, but they have this the summer special. Um, so between July and Labor Day, that incentive, that $500 incentive, has been increased for up to $2,000. So it's really like seize the moment, take advantage of these rebates um, to be able to deliver a variety of um, products or services to the to your clients. For those of you uh, working in Alameda County, the incentive there is up to 1000 for achieving a green label, kind of similar aspects of being about the scope of work from elements to whole house. And additionally, Alameda County has the $200 referral fee for the contractor or the realtor. I mean, what does this mean for all of us? Really, our job in this industry, right? Well. Let me say it. Uh, our job in the industry is really to work with our clients, right, to communicate with them, to educate them on what's out there, be it rebates, um, green upgrades they can do, energy upgrades they can do, and facilitate participation in programs, facilitate them in achieving rebates, um, facilitate them in meeting their goals for their upgrades. So, if we think about that's our job and what context are we working in, remodeling is on the upswing. 
Right? There's going to be a lot more that's coming down the pike. It may be some smaller size projects as we've seen in the past, but we're going to be seeing a large number of projects, um, again, of smaller size. And these folks are going to be looking at funding through um, EUC to uh, be able to implement or drive their projects. Um, and that funding can be just for the energy upgrades or, as you saw, also for the additional green label. So those rebates for the green label isn't meant to completely pay for the label, but definitely offset the cost of achieving it, um, and they can receive the benefits of it. Additionally, customers um, who want the green, you know, want green, and they can get this. Uh, they want it, and is it a cost evaluation? We talked about um, how folks are evaluating these choices for remodeling, and cost is a driving factor. But yet, they're interested in green. So how are they going to get there? There are these rebates and incentives out there to help them achieve that goal. Energy efficiency programs, incentivized products and systems are already part of the remodel work. So whether or not you are doing basic or advanced single measures, the things that you are going to be looking at to recommend to your client to improve the comfort of the home, to improve the energy efficiency, um, to improve the indoor air quality are addressed in these programs and they should be part of your your work. So, you know, it, these um, dovetail nicely with the scope of work that you will be delivering. And as Kevin mentioned, um, nationally recognized certifications are becoming the norm. As um, utilities are rolling out programs, local jurisdictions and consumers are becoming more savvy about um, program certifications and quality of work, and be looking towards certification to give them the assurance of the quality of work that's happening on their project, um, the knowledge that that particular person has, the standards that the work is being done to. So we're seeing that with BPI, we're seeing that with HERS, and we're seeing with that with Greenpoint Rated. So the opportunity. I'm sure many of you have seen this a number of times, but I think it's always worth restating. 70% of our existing housing stock, when that's what we are targeting, has been built before the Energy Code 1978. They all need upgrades. They are big energy users, so that means big savings, big opportunities for us. Um, California is on a course to drastically reduce the energy consumption in the state. If we look at some of the goals that have been put out to um, jurisdictions or at the state level through CPUC strategic planning, we have high targets not only for new construction but also for the reduction of energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions of existing homes. And we need to get there. And it's these programs and these rebates that can help us do it. For as contractors, how can you stay ahead of this trend and um, meet your clients' needs and and get them on board is you can get home performance training and certification and you can get green building training and certification and you can lead with those credentials, educate your client or the consumer about the benefits of these, uh, help them participate um, and achieve the rebates um, that are available right now and deliver them more comfortable, um, more environmentally preferable homes. Lastly, I just want to close with um, what the upcoming training opportunities are. So we just talked to you about, you know, what the what the landscape is like for you and um, how you can start pulling um, these things together to um, in your services to to deliver to your client. We've got the basic package training. Uh, that we're delivering. It's a three-day technical training for Energy Upgrade California. The next one is July 12th to the 14th in Stockton. It's free. Um, you can get all the information about it at www.builditgreenutility.org. The next three trainings are all listed on the Build It Green calendar. We're offering CGBP in Long Beach end of July. Accompanying with that is the Greenpoint Rated Core and the existing homes. Scholarships are available for all three of those trainings, so you can check it out on our website. And then we have the BPI Building Analyst, and that's at the end of July and the end of August. It's a two-part series, right? 
and it's in Sacramento. This is just general contact information for training opportunities. You can contact Build a Green, Greenpoint Rated. You can contact um, the Greenpoint Rated team at extension 604. If you're in, California, in Southern California um, and have questions more about the LA County programs, you can contact David Myers down there. And for rebates, most of the rebate staff should be up on the Energy Upgrade California. You type in your county and you can see what's available, not only for like the basic and advanced, but also with the green labeling uh, rebates are. And with that, that concludes our presentation. And we're going to switch it back to Michelle, who will um, provide some additional updates and advice with any questions or comments you may have. Yes, so um, we do have a few questions here. Wait, let me get my screen. I should be back. Come on, I lost my organizer. Okay. Show my screen. Okay. We just need to Okay. Sorry guys. Okay. So we do have we do have a question that came early on. Um, and let me just get that for folks. Okay. So yeah, this came early on um, from David. So David asked, um, maybe this is going. Sorry, guys. I'm having a little problem here. I'm a OK, David did ask. He's in, um, he rehabs homes in Sacramento County and would like to use the Greenpoint rated training system for his rehab. Is there an obstacle to this idea? Um, I guess two, two things. There's no reason why you can't use the checklist as a tool in itself to think about what to look at or consider in doing a rehab. Um, regardless of whether you're going through a rating or not, it is a tool to think about things to consider. So you can always use that. It's available on our website. As far as using it for completing a rating, there's no obstacle for you to um, participate in Greenpoint Rated and uh, achieve a rating or certificate for your project. It depends on what avenue you want to go down. The avenue that's readily available to you is to go to our website and find somebody who is an existing home rater in your region and hire them to be the third party rater and help you through the process, make sure you meet all the requirements. It's readily available to you right now. If you yourself want to be doing the rating, then you're going to have to go through our training process, um, become a certified Greenpoint Rater, and then participate in our additional QA requirements um, for the contractor delivery model. And that means you'll be working with a QA Rater on, um, on all your projects, initially at least your first three. Um, where that QA rater will be doing all the verification for you and mentoring you to make sure you understand the process and um, the method of verification and the work. Okay. We have another question from Stuart. Do the four BPI audits that are required for Greenpoint rated existing home need to be on record before taking the existing home training or can they be done after taking the course? Uh, good question. Um, we want you to have, well, before I answer your question, I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, with the uh, Greenpoint Aided Existing Home course, we actually have created two certifications available. One is an advisor and one is a rater. We really focused on the rater certifications here. Um, to become a rater, that those eligibility requirements have to, have to be met prior to taking the course. Um, so we want to see that prior to you taking the course and taking the exam to become a rater. That said, there are a number of folks who 
and this may be you, Stuart, who are in the middle of kind of achieving that. And our recommendation is to take the course, you take the exam to become an advisor, because that has a, a lower threshold of eligibility, because the advisor is not the one who is doing the verification and submitting for the certificate. So take the course, become an advisor. As soon as you've completed those tests and had that experience, you get to contact us, give us a call, and we'll figure out a time where you can take the Raider exam. It's just a different exam. The training you took before is adequate. You can take that Raider exam. Upon passing that, we would change your status to a Raider, and then you can proceed down that pathway. Okay. So we have another question. Um, Lance, he's a building designer and Greenpoint Raider advisor for existing homes. Can he rate his own projects? Not as an advisor. Um, as an advisor, as I mentioned, the eligibility requirements are different. So if you want to be a raider, you have to meet all the eligibility requirements that we identified for a raider, and that's the building experience as well as the home performance experience as defined um, by Build a Green on our application. And you have to have the testing experience. Once you meet that, if you're currently an advisor, um, and you meet that eligibility requirements, again, you can contact us and we can uh, facilitate that process to take the Raider exam and look um, to achieve that certification. Okay. Um, so great. Another question, a follow-up question from Stuart. What type of documentation is required for the four audits? Uh, good question. What type of documentation? We're actually pretty flexible in this regard. Um, obviously, you know, if you're a HERS Raider, you're going to be generating CF4Rs, or you can give us a screenshot of your registry, um, something of that nature. Um, if you're a home performance contractor, HVAC contractor, BPI, somebody is doing evaluations and generating reports, um, then some copy of that report um, is sufficient. Uh, something that documents you did the test, this is what the test you did, these are the results. Or I guess a 6R would also work if you're an installer. Okay. We'll stay on the line for a few more, few more minutes to see if more questions come in. But while we're waiting, um, I want to let folks know, we hope that you'll join us for some of our upcoming webinars this month. We Next week, next Wednesday morning, we have Overview of Mechanical Ventilation in California Homes with Judy Roberson. That's Wednesday, June 29th from 11 to 12.30. And that is available for 1.5 CEUs. And then the, the next day, on Thursday, June 30th, we've got the Greenpoint Rated Climate Calculator with Greenpoint Rated Program Manager, Tanaya Asan. Um, and that is from 11 to noon. That is a free webinar, and no CEVs are available for that. Um, and then we do, here's contact information if you do have questions for Amy or Kevin. Um, <laughs> And we'll, again, as I mentioned, um, Amy and Kevin are willing to stay on for the next few minutes to see if there's any additional questions. It takes always a few minutes for folks to type those into the chat box. Okay, well, um, we quite appreciate bunch. <laughs> that. A quiet bunch. Yeah, quite a bunch this morning. I think they, they've covered everything um, really well, and we hope that you found this information helpful. Thanks again to Amy and Kevin, and thank you all for attending today. If you have additional questions, you know, you can contact us or any of those um, websites and email addresses that Amy had given. And we again, we do appreciate if you could take a moment to fill the survey right afterwards to let us know how we're doing with our webinar offerings. Okay, we're going to officially close the webinar. Thank you so much, and goodbye.